Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Too Many Topics. <laughs> Tonight, we got a uh, very special guest with us, Allison Moreau. Hi. Uh, and I got it right that time. <laughs> you I, did, you did. I butcher everybody's <laughs> names on this show for That's some right. reason. And I, I really shouldn't butcher hers because me and Allison have known each other for quite a while, probably a little over eight years now. Allison has been working with us at uh, Wicket Realtors here, you know, since the inception of our real estate license, which yeah. we're pretty proud of. <laughs> So tonight we're going to get to know a little bit about you and your professional side. You know, you're a woman entrepreneur, which I really respect. It's one of the main things that I respect about you. (laughs) Thank you, Um, thank you. So we'll get into a little bit about your professional career. We'll get a little bit into your personal career and see what uh, what you have on the horizon. Sounds good. All right. So without further ado, let's get at it. Tommy, unfortunately, is not with us tonight. So I have the pleasure of uh, hanging out with me. Yep, hosting (laughs) this all on my own tonight. A lot of pressure, but I think I'm up for it. So how you been? Pretty good, pretty good. How's everything with you? I'm good, I'm good. You know, finally got you here. I know, it's been a long, it's been crazy. It's yeah, been we've, crazy. We've, been, uh, <laughs> we've been talking about it for a while. You've been seeing, you know, what's going on with this thing. And finally, we were able to uh, corral you in to get me here. Yes, yes. I love the room, by the way. I appreciate that. It came out really it. good. <laughs> a lot of work, a lot of uh, changes that went yes. into this place. Met you about eight years ago, right? You came in here looking for a job in real estate. Yeah, time flew freaking by, man. Yeah, I remember like it was yesterday. Which is all good. You met Kathy O'Leary, I believe. Yes, right? that's Kathy's how I chose this company well, through her. Garbarino now. Yes, she Garbarino. Might, she might have been O'Leary <laughs> back then, but she's Kathy Garbarino now. Thank God, right? For me yes. and the company. Thank that, God. That, that, uh, <laughs> Woman's an her. angel. And that you met her. Give me a, a little idea of, or our listeners, an idea of uh, what, what made you get into real estate. So I've always been in like the service industry. I worked at a bar basically my whole life, 16 on. Um, I like people, I like socializing, and I really didn't want to go to college to just tell you that that's just the God's honest truth. So- There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, just, it wasn't for me. Um, I tried the whole medical thing, the nine to five, wasn't for me. One of my best friends at the time said, why don't we try real estate? I'm like, oh, okay, cool. We can make our own schedule. We could talk to people and let's try it. So we went to the class, um, and the rest is really history. Right, here right? we are. Here, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> Which is good because that's she didn't do it though. <laughs> She's I not mean, a people person. It's but. not for everybody, yeah. you know. And as you know, it's especially sales. You know, you get out of it what you put into it. Not taking away from your friend, you know. I'm sure that she went on to do some beautiful things on her own. But sales, especially real estate, you know, isn't, isn't the easiest. Yeah. I find a lot of people get into the business today because they think it's easy and then they find out you know very quickly that it's not you know it's, it's, no it, it, it takes a lot you know to be successful when speaking of successful I'm sure you are very proud I know we're very proud that you went from that you know bright eyed coming in here scared <laughs> to death to talk to somebody <laughs> to, to one of the top agents on Staten Island and uh, in a very short period of time right I mean even though you're in it eight years you've been a top producer for, for many of them seven so, yeah, so you should be, you know, I know, like I said, we're very proud of you. Thank you. You should be proud of you, yourself as well, and I'm sure your family is. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty proud of myself. <laughs> you know, I noticed one thing, technology is something that you have gotten a lot better with over the mm-hmm. last, and, and, and when I say technology, more specifically, probably social media, that you've gotten a lot more comfortable with. I know that a lot of people probably struggle with what they look like on camera or what they sound like. A microphone, you know, I know I struggled with it for a while, and I realized this is what you look like buddy you ain't you ain't changing so. yeah social media is tough there's a lot of hate on there and i was always so scared to go on if i knew and i had the confidence i have now five years ago i would have went way further but i was scared i didn't want to go on oh what are people gonna think what if i mess up you know you stand in front of the camera take 400 pictures of yourself and you hate all 400 right you just got to kind of get over that it took me a long time to get over it but I'm finally over it. I would have never been on this podcast ever. Um, Especially with a camera in front of you. I know. I would have never. The voice part (laughs) is easy. But to that point, I believe social media or social advertising is what I like to call it, plays a big part of your business. Do you agree? It does. Yes, it does. Everybody's on social media. If you're not on social media, you just shouldn't even be doing real estate at this point. There is absolutely no reason why everybody shouldn't be on it. Well, it's where the eyeballs are, right? It, it's yeah, where the people it's, are get their news. It's the from. consumer. Yeah, it's basically I don't even watch the news anymore. I just open TikTok or Instagram. Usually it's TikTok, but 
Yeah. But I, I believe that you're not alone, right? I, I think before the TikToks of the world and the Instagrams of the world, it was Facebook, right? 100%. And that's where I got my news from. And I, I've right. never watched the news on I, TV. I felt like you could get something quicker off of that than you would by the time it took you at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 or whatever, whatever time the news came it out. It would come right up on your Instagram feed, right at the top. And that's why I think, you know, there's billions of people on it today is because of the fact that besides these other benefits, I almost feel like it's a synergy between people, right? I think social media, people have all different ideas of what it's out there for. I firmly believe that Mark Zuckerberg knew one thing concrete that besides probably food and shelter, the next thing that humans need is human contact. Right, and, 100%. and that's what that gave you. That gave you the ability for, you know, grandma in, in Houston to see her kids, you know, in New York, or grandkids in, in Florida, and, and it just kind of made the world a lot smaller, right? Absolutely. And I think that um, from a marketing perspective, that's where the eyeballs are. A hundred percent. But with that comes a lot of negative. It is not for the faint of heart. You have to either get over it, or just get over it. Because those people, the worst thing they can do to you is write something bad on the computer. They can't physically hurt you. Right. And if you know that, you'll be fine. Well, that I think that's that's a great point, right? Because I think that's the negative side, especially for the younger generation. Yes, ex right? exactly. Unfortunately, exactly. you have thick skin. Obviously, you wouldn't be in this business. But I you... didn't years ago. I'm talking to the people younger than me. Don't do what I did. Don't wait. Don't get scared. Just right. do it. And I think that's what it is. I think it's the fear of... Rejection. Yeah, and quite honestly, it's fear of people's opinions that you don't care about and they don't care about you either, right? It's a weird dynamic how I think we get so nervous about people that we don't even know and probably wouldn't even care to know if we did, but they could write something Agreed. random on your And it would ruin page. your whole day. Exactly. You don't, it will just ruin your whole day and you'll just, that's it. And I think that envy is a word that comes to my head, right? I think that a lot of it stems from envy, a lot of it stems from jealousy. I think that a lot of people probably would love to be in your position and do what you do, but for whatever reason they can't. And you know, I'm a little older than you, and I think as you go through life and you look at things in a different perspective, you know, years ago, I don't know if, if you went through this, but there was points in my life where I had to detox from social media because I just couldn't deal with the negativity anymore because I started taking it personal, right? Not the negativity towards me, just the negativity in general on social media. I would read a post and then I would watch all these people bash this person and I would feel the need to jump in and kind of defend that person where it was really taking a toll on me and now, I think it, I have a different approach on it where I actually try to deploy compassion to these people to say, if you're waking up early to get on Allison's page and to write some stupid shit or to write, you know, slanderous stuff. Lord knows there's millions of them. And, but but, <laughs> but that, that also says Lord knows that they're in a dark place in life, yes, right? And, and that's where the compassion comes from, that I actually feel bad for people. But on a positive note, I think that to your point, you know, it's a big part of the business today. A lot of people are afraid to do it. You obviously proven that you're not afraid anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> because there was a time that, you know, we spent hours in this office trying to figure out how we we're gonna get you on a camera and, and uh, I just wouldn't do it. And then it just clicked <laughs> one day, right? Yeah, so you you detox from social media. I said, All right, let's make a video and then never made it. So it's I guess kinda the same thing. No, absolutely the um, same thing. I'm sure you made many videos that you didn't And just talk. delete it. Just hit the delete button. <laughs> right. And they'd be the same exact videos. Filter on filter on filter. Fil edit that filter. Put more on. Make sure it looks perfect. And then just to delete it three hours later, waste my whole time. It, it was just a nightmare. You just so, can't care what people think. To that word that you just said, perfect, that's what gets... This is perfect right now. But we get paralyzed sometimes yes. with perfect, right? It has to be so great where it can never be day, good enough you'll never get progress nope. out of perfection no nope. right? so yeah. this is perfect right now it's live still a little nervous because it's my first podcast but this is live this is what it is and I think if you love it great i love you too if you hate it i love you even more so it, it is what it is and you'll be pleasantly surprised you'll see that this will be another thing that you'll continue to do and i'm sure you'll have your own podcast very sure because me and you've been talking yeah, about for, for quite a while, while. and yes. quite honestly i gotta give it up to you a little because you're probably the one that drove me into this you know you you got a <laughs> lot more on your plate right now and we're going to talk about that in a minute so maybe the podcast got pushed to the side it did you were the driving force behind me and then all of a sudden it started to become fun say we're a great team and now it's, <laughs> like, now it's a passion so I, I do i appreciate you for that always, always so let's talk about you know the other side of it right so it's that life 
work balance that is just so difficult sometimes to do but i know that you are a i don't want to call you a new homeowner because i know you've owned multiple properties in the past but i know that you are a brand new homeowner of a home that you just built <laughs> for you and your family which yes has, has yes. to be pretty pretty cool tell me a little bit about that process uh, so we did we built a home um we've been saving for a while dream home. this is yeah this is all yes i was lucky enough to be able to put myself in a position to not i can't say lucky i wasn't lucky i worked my ass off blood sweat tears times 100 but lucky enough to have that ambition in me we did we built our dream home which the goal was to build it by the time we're 40 i'm 32 so i'm ahead of the game yeah it was it was a long road we built it right when all of the lumber went up and it was just it was a nightmare yeah anybody that kind of built in the last couple of years probably got skyrocketed right it took way longer than expected we were in an apartment with my two-year-old a 120 pound dog if me and my husband well fiance made it through that i think we can make it through anything because if we were going to split up it would have been in that apartment which makes a lot of sense (laughs) and god did i want to kill him and i'm sure a lot of people can uh (laughs) relate relate to it being oh uh, god and if you can't it's the beginning of your relationship because we've been together for nine years so i I think covid did that to people covid realized made people realize the house was too small right yes (laughs) they needed to get uh, you know a little private space but yes i I know you built a beautiful beautiful home in new jersey so i hope you you guys get to enjoy that for many many years i'm sure that you will i'll be dying in that house <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully not um but you touched on your two two-year-old yes mila who is two and a half two actually. and a half yes she's yeah. here all the time tracy and you made our playroom right next door yep. she's, which she's, is great she's one of the family so yes talk about how because that's a struggle you know you, you've handled it with grace you've handled it with <laughs> dignity um, Lost a know. couple of years and got a couple gray right. hairs. Yeah, <laughs> maybe came in the office a couple of times with shit on a shirt that I didn't know exactly <laughs> know what it was. But Mila threw something out or spit up on him. Oh, um, how do you how do you balance that for those people out there that struggle oh. with with toddlers and, and trying to have a professional career? You've seemed to to handle it pretty well. So I want to say wing it, but uh, I guess I don't really even know. You just you got to do it, right? You just have to you have to do it. You have a Support system sounds gay because everybody says it, but it's true. If I didn't have a playroom here, I couldn't come into work. If I didn't have my mom helping me, I couldn't do this. It, you know, it's the people around you, I think, um, and I'm lucky enough to have that. But she also comes with me. She comes to houses. She comes to inspections. She's screaming on the phone. I've had to change my outfit 17 times in the morning because she's made it disgusting. I actually had to go into somebody's house with a cheese puff handprint on my white pants, and that just happened last week because I didn't have time to change. So I think you just make it work and... Well, they don't come with a handbook. No, they don't. I wish they did. <laughs> I wish they did. That person would make a lot of money with yeah. that Yeah. You know what? That should be our next venture. Right. Let's do, let's do a handbook. <laughs> well, if you're judge, <laughs> judging and looking at my two kids, I'm not sure if you want to read that yeah, book. Yeah, mine It's either. my wife. I probably actually. have a stain on me somewhere. Yeah, it's the wife. God makes bless me look Kristen. great. Yes. Makes me look <laughs> God great. bless her. <laughs> but I, but I, I will say one thing, and I really admire you for it. We do know each other a long time, but we get to learn each, a little bit about each other every day. I hear gratitude. I love that in you. Thank Some you. people... You know, go through life and think it's supposed to happen. Right? No, it's hard work. Blood, sweat, yeah. tears. You have to be, and, and you have to be grateful. You, yeah, you, know, you, you can't to, take anything for granted. Right. Or else it's just not going to happen. You know, that that's the one thing that I keep pulling out of it. Is it true? Open house was Mila's first two words. Oh, I think so. It might have been. <laughs> right? Yeah, I grew up in a similar way. Obviously, I yeah. wasn't. Uh, I wasn't that young, but I did grow up around the kitchen table of open and talking about open houses and for sale signs and you know real estate as a child. Me and my sister, our Sunday afternoons was driving from office to office cleaning them. When so, she first started talking, well, not talking, saying "mommy," she saw the signs, my face on it. You were here, "mommy, mommy, mom, mom." <laughs> so yeah, she she knows. Drives past the office, Laura, Laura. How work, work, that, right? it's crazy. And she probably, now that you're in Jersey and, and Wycott has a big presence out there, I know my kids, they think that I own every Wycott. So if they see a sign, yeah. they're like, there's Daddy's work. Yeah. Like, no, that's not Daddy's <laughs> Everything. work. Everything, any yellow sign, work, work. Oh, good. Yes, so, Mila. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right. I, I own them all. I have everything. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, uh, we have a common bond between that yeah. with our children. So you're living in, like we said earlier, you're living out in New Jersey yeah. now. How do you like that commute back and forth? Because obviously it was a lot different than living five yeah. miles away from work. But you know what? If there's traffic on Rocklands Avenue, it's still going to take you an hour to get home. 
So it's kind of the same thing, to great be honest. Point, great it point. really is. You're sitting in, let's say, fr- not even Friday, Wednesday night traffic coming from Jungin Hills to Tottenville. It's the same. It takes me 45 minutes to get home, 45 minutes to come here. I'm actually against the traffic, so there's always traffic on the opposite side. And right. that's the beauty, I guess, right, yeah. of your scheduling, right? You, you're able to pick and choose, not always, right? Clients always come first, but yes. you're able to pick and choose when exactly you want to leave the office or when exactly you want to And I kind of know the times. Like, if I have a 5 o'clock appointment, usually I'm here anyway from the morning till night. You can't you can't be a real estate agent and work part-time. I don't care what anybody says. You, you can if you want to just go on a vacation. Either. Yeah, exactly. Okay, if you want to make it a full-time career, I personally cannot work from home. I have to be in an office. I think you call that old school, whatever. I'm an old soul. You have to be here at 9, and then you leave when the day ends. Right. But I am not leaving here at 5. I will either leave here at 3, or I will leave here at 7. Right, to try to Just, avoid yes. any of that. Yes, but that's usually a, I'm against the traffic. That's a good point. I mean, it's a little off topic, but I think that, unfortunately, that's the problem in our industry today is the fact that too many people treat this as a gig and not necessarily as a career like you did, and a lot of other people that, that have been successful in it kind of hurts the industry a little, right? Kind of hurts that consumer experience because I feel like sometimes we all get painted with the same brush. 100%. Look at this past year that happened. Right. So I Every think. single person and their mother got their real estate license and what happens? They messed up. Let's be honest on a whole bunch of stuff that everybody thinks they're great, which listen, they're great. Everybody's great. But that pe- that takes us as the hard workers and just... Kind of mushes you with everybody, mm-hmm. right? I had somebody on a couple of weeks ago and we talked about you know, I use the term the F agent, right? Thinks that they're an A plus agent, and but unfortunately, the F agent made money over the last couple of years. He did. He did. You know, that's the problem. What I'm curious to see is how the cream is going to rise to the top now. That we're starting to see some cracks in the foundation. Exciting. It is <laughs> yeah, exciting. It's going right? to be so exciting. exciting. I'm excited already. <laughs> For people that like yourself, that really, you know hone your craft every day and and get better and better at it and truly care about your customers and truly care about your reputation, sure, I would think that you aligned yourself over the last eight years to put yourself in a position of success today. 100%. Where a lot of people that just came in and said, oh, I'm going to do it because it's quote unquote easy. Easy. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of what I meant. It's easy. It's not easy. The people that thought it was easy this past market, it exploded this market in this past year. They think it's easy. Yes, this past year was easy, but next well, year's and, not going to be easy. And probably what you're saying is like 21, right? 22, I think. Yeah, you yes, see, 21, 21, you not 22. Seeing, well, quite honestly, I looked at my broker's license the other day. I got my broker's license. I'm actually embarrassed. Not embarrassed. I can't say I'm embarrassed <laughs> to say. But, you tell know, them your age. Tell them your age. But I got my broker's license in 1993. I think I, I was, oh, I was three and a half. Right. So, I think. When's your right. birthday? April 6th. Yep, three and a half. I was right. born in September. So, but that's, I don't know when I got the license, but I, <laughs> I was going through it, you know, to, I had put some CE uh, certificates in my file the other day, and I had saying all these licenses and licenses. I'm like, my broker's license doesn't even look like they do today. Back then, it was a completely <laughs> different piece of paper. i seen a lot of different markets. I've seen the ups, I've seen the downs, probably two or three or four cycles. Well, so you were, oh, seven, you were here for that. Yes. I wasn't. I saw that the better agents in a bad market make all the money because people now will migrate to you, right? When things are good and it's easy to sell a house, I can use my nephew's cousin's friend yes. because I don't want to be embarrassed at Christmas dinner that I didn't use my nephew's cousin's friend who also has four other full-time jobs. With you, now you'll see that if I need heart surgery, I need to go to a real heart surgeon. I can't Probably go to the med- shouldn't go on the corner. Yeah, I can't go on the <laughs> medical center on the corner, right? So I find that you'll see a huge, huge push towards the more professional agent today than somebody that just sticks a sign in the ground, crosses their fingers, uses hope as a strategy, and you know sometimes gets lucky, right? They over the last few years a- have gotten absolutely, very lucky. Absolutely, and listen, even in bad markets that could happen, right? Sure, I'm absolutely. sure people. Always says you can't sell a uh, house at an open house. My first open house, I actually sold the house. Right. Remember Nicolosi Drive? Sure. We sold that at an open house. At a multi multi million dollar house that you sold in in an Mm -hmm. open house. In an open house. And to that point, I think that dynamics of the business have changed tremendously. We spoke earlier about social media. I can speak from from an open house perspective. When I first got in this job, 
everybody told you open houses don't work all they do is appease the homeowner what are you doing them for today i think with the scheduling problems with people right everyone has something to do there's so much going on children i know for me personally if it's not a softball game it's a baseball game and you know it's every day every day every day if it's not practice it's a game so i don't necessarily have that tuesday night from seven to nine to go look at houses the way we used to do it (laughs) and today it's more of hey I'll grab my wife, we'll jump in the car, and we'll go look at three or four open houses because it's on our own time. Absolutely. And I think that's what's playing into more of the reasoning behind open houses being a lot more beneficial today to not only the homeowner and and the buyer, but also the agent too, because you can kind of have a closed captured audience for that particular time on that house, right? You're not now an eight in the morning appointment, a two in the afternoon appointment. Oh, I do that anyway. Oh, well, yeah. well you, you can't not do it, right? Yeah. It just, but it gives you, you the opportunity to say to a client, hey, if eight o'clock on Tuesday doesn't work, the house will be open on Saturday and Sunday from one to four. Now you just gave me eight hours to kind of fit you in opposed to, you know, me trying to squeeze into that, um, you know, two hour window that you might have on a Tuesday or a Thursday night. Absolutely. I also think that the open houses now that people are doing with the rates high and all this craziness going on, I think if you want to work with buyers, there's only going to be real buyers, my opinion, coming into the open houses right now. Nobody's going to house shop right now. If somebody wants a house with these interest rates and everything going up and down and the rece- you know all this talk you hear i'm not even gonna say the r word but that's a buyer that's a real buyer that wants a real house five uh, people come I, in now you have five more customers to work with i couldn't agree with you more i think that anybody that decides on like a saturday or a sunday afternoon to just get yeah, in a car and arbitrarily look at houses that they're not interested in are kooks. And look at the gas prices. Right. That's no. the other thing. You're not <laughs> Who's tr- wasting money on that? Not it me. It costs you $72 <laughs> to look at three houses. In, in yeah, no, yeah. Abs- absolutely. Maybe you'll get the neighbor walking next door. I mean, the nosy neighbor you're always yeah, going to get. But the majority, they're going to be real people. It's not going to just be, oh, let's, hi, babe, let's just go house shopping. Yeah. Want, no. We, we, there's no decorating <laughs> ideas anymore is what you're telling me? No. Right. No. Yeah. Not with those gas prices. Right. Hell no. <laughs> no, and I agree. I agree. So what's next? You know, what, what do you? What's on the horizon for you? Because I know someone like you can't sit still. <laughs> no. I've seen her for eight years in action, and you know she's, al- she's always to. got. <laughs> and one thing I will say, you know, me and her spoke eight years ago about different ideas that she's had, and we, we put together certain plans, and she stuck to them to the letter of the law, and, and accomplished every single one of them. Thank you. So what, <laughs> I appreciate that. Whatever's going to come out. And I remember you telling me when we first met one day, mm-hmm. you said your goal was, I just don't want to work at the bar anymore. And I said, yeah. you, and this was early in our career where you could see that she had the work ethic of four women. Mm-hmm. I said, if you continue to do what you do, you're going to you know, be a monster in this industry. And that's certainly what you became. That's all. Well, I appreciate that. And that, listen, that's still the goal. Um, we spoke privately before this. There's a couple things, you know, in play that I'm messing around with, but um, it has to be the right fit for me. And because I'm not going to just say I'm going to do something and it's not going to happen, I'm going to do it. But there's a couple things. I'm one thing in particular I'm pretty excited about. Well, I think what it comes down to is you constantly want to grow your business. Yes. Right? No. And it's all about real estate. It's nothing else. It's all real estate. I started from nothing. Literally, I started. I came in here. I didn't even want to make a phone call. And now I'm sitting here on a podcast. It's all about growth. It's all with real estate. But there's a couple of things. Oh, we'll see. We'll see. Well, that's awesome. Well, I like surprises. I hope you I do like, too. I like surprises too. I like surprises <laughs> too. And one thing that I will say is you are a woman of your word, right? So if it is something that you're putting your mind to, I'm sure that you'll accomplish it. I'm sure that family has a lot to do with it, right? That you have different goals today that you might have had eight years ago when you you didn't have a husband and a beautiful daughter. I know my life changed drastically when when I had children. That's like a 360. (laughs) Absolutely, because you don't do it for you anymore. No, everything's for her. Everything. I'm super excited. It's her, Teddy, me at the bottom. Well, not even. Her, Teddy, Bailey, Allison. (laughs) Right. Well, yeah, a long time ago, you gave up the rights that you have in any fun. I know. uh, Everything is about... Yeah, it's alright, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. So, which is awesome. Well, I'm excited. I hope we can get you back on here. Quite honestly, I hope, or I hope that you actually catapult this thing into Ooh. your own your own version of, of doing this. Like I said, I think, we like surprises. Yes, I think <laughs> that uh, I think that you would be f- fantastic at it, as you are at many things that you put your head to. 
and accomplish. You have an open invitation to come back on, so I hope that you take us up on that. I will. I know in between, <laughs> it's not easy to, to nail you down <laughs> in, with uh, you know, the craziness of, of life and, and everything else that we were talking about earlier, but um, you do always have an open invitation. Why don't you let everybody know where they can find you so they could look into a little bit more of what you do and how you operate. Uh, any social media site, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Allison underscore Moreau, or you can email me at allisonmoreau at gmail.com. Spell Moreau, because people are going to... True, like you, messed it yeah. up. <laughs> it's uh, A-L-L-I-S-O-N-M-I-R-E-A-U at gmail.com. I've sent 4,700 emails to, to the wrong person because <laughs> I keep spelling the last name wrong. Oh, yeah, he does. So, <laughs> and then we argue, and he tells me he's wrong, so uh, it's yes. fine. <laughs> you have to admit when you're wrong. That's important. <laughs> okay, so check her out on, on the different platforms. She's really a force in the industry right now, but she's also you know, a wonderful, wonderful person. Turned out to be a wonderful, wonderful mother. Can't you're wait making to, me blush. <laughs> can't, can't, can't wait to see what else you, know, you have in store. Um, and I think a lot of people are going to be excited to see what the next chapter is going to be for you. I hope so. I am. I am very excited. So All right, I well, hope so. All right. Well, listen, we're going to wrap it up. I want to thank everybody for listening. You know, check us out on pretty much any way that you listen to podcasts. We're out there. You can check us out on all social media platforms as well at Too Many Topics and Too Many Topics Podcast. Our website, Too Many Topics.com, has pretty much a wealth of information of everything that's going on on the show. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll be back soon. All right, it was a great Thank time. I appreciate you being here. Thank you, always. Thanks, Thank Scott. Bye-bye.